Welcome to SNY.TV's Islanders Interactive. Folks, in and around all this referendum stuff, it's time for some hockey talk. What Absolutely. do you say, Brian? This is the Beat on Brian Compton edition, actually. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> every edition? <laughs> and we start <laughs> off with Mark from Rockville Center. Brooks Lake stayed home. Zach Parisi will stay home. Any other names that Brian would like to float out there to help improve the Islanders? Well, you got guys internally. You got Mark Streit, Nino Niederreiter is going to be on the team. Um, beep, I beep, beep. <laughs> I'm not backing up. Look, <laughs> I think you got to look at Buffalo right now, Chris. Um, whether it's Thomas Vanek, whether it's Jordan Leopold. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. All right. Because yeah. I, I've seen that on my site and on Islander Mania recently. You mean to tell me that after this owner came in and saved the team and has spent all this money, they're going to trade Thomas Vanek? Probably not. But they will trade Jordan Leopold for the right oh, price, I would think, that's right? That's fine, but Jordan Leopold doesn't get me to. No, well, they got to do something to get to the floor, right? He's and a, Jordan Leopold helped the Islanders, don't get me oh, wrong. Oh, yeah, I no just, question. He had a career year last year. I think he had 13 goals and 35 points. So, uh, look, it, if it doesn't cost much, they need another defenseman who can chip in offensively. Yeah, no, that no, that's fine. And there are other things that I've seen. Palm and Bills ain't come up. I've seen Vanek, and I just Drew Stafford could be another guy. That it just seemed to me it would just be like you know this guy wants to be the hero. No, the I owner. understand. And but they're I over the cap. Right, a cap issue eventually. But I just can't see them doing it. Or you know they're going to have to give up something to right. get something. So in that vein, Tom from Bronxville, New York. Brian, you spent many months saying this was the summer that the Islanders had to make a splash and get a named impact player for many reasons, and I agreed. How annoyed are you that they've done nothing? Well, I'm not that annoyed, Tom. I mean, Brooks Lake was gone before the market even opened, and when you look at some of these contracts, which of the players who signed with other teams did you say, well, why didn't Garth do that? I mean, the money that was spent on July 1st for a market that wasn't strong, Chris, I think it was $265 million on July 1st alone. It's kind of crazy. There will be something happening between now and training camp, I would think, and let's just uh, buckle our belts and see what happens. Yeah, I think something will happen in the next couple of weeks. I don't even think it'll be too close to training camp. I, you know, I have some problems with this. Look at all this money spent. As I believe I wrote on the blog, the average salary is 2.4. So you see these guys, you know, some average players like our friend Sean Berg and I making 2.75. It's not that crazy, you know. Um, the other free agents who are out there, you know, Brian McCabe's a friend, right. but I just, you know, that they, they may they might sign Brian McCabe, but that's still not the move. I think they they have uh, one big chip that they can play. I don't think they'd have to give up much to get it, and uh, there's still work to be done. There's still work to be done. We gave our pledge that we would come in here if they made the big move. <laughs> we came in here anyway, and they haven't made the big move, which reminds me of something else. Hopefully we get to in this segment. Anthony C., Las Vegas. Will Ryan Strom get a nine-game look this season as Nino Nito Ryder did last year? It depends on his camp. I think he has to have a lights-out camp to, to get that look. Um, they have a, a lot of depth at center between Tavares and Bailey and Nielsen and Marty Reasoner's on board now as well. So uh, Ryan Strom's got to be lights-out in camp to get those nine games, I think. You know, when I first saw this question, I was like, no, no, no. You know, my immediate reaction was just send them back, let them go back. But who am I to say? You know, Jeff Skinner, I, you know, if Jeff Skinner was drafted by the Islanders last year or if we were doing Hurricanes point blank SNY.TV, <laughs> I would have been, oh, are you kidding me? He's got to go back, right. right? And then you saw what he did. So they want to give him a look. You know, who am I or anybody else to say otherwise? I don't think he'll be on the team in the long run. No. Uh, but will they, will they consider it? Sure, they will. Uh, Nick M. Huntington. With the August 1st vote looming, does Garth Snow have a quote-unquote deadline where he would prefer to make an impact trade prior to August 1st in order to create an exciting buzz amongst Islanders country? I don't think so. I think we, whatever the date is, it's got to be the best deal that's going to help the Islanders this season and long term. That's the words that Garth always uses. Um, to, to think that he's got to make this huge splash before August 1st. Chris, I think the people who are going to vote yes are going to vote yes that, no matter what And happens. that's that's the crux of it. I would like to think that anybody who cares about this team <laughs> right. will, and, and it is around or has an arranged an absentee ballot, is going to get to the polls and vote, uh, you know, 
would a franchise unbelievable name but we could talk about great players like and God, I'm afraid I'm going to say this right now but like Shea Weber mm -hmm. that's still it, it would be incredible for the team right. don't get me wrong but that's not going to be enough to make Long Island people who are on the fence about the Islanders do it so you know would it be nice for the fans to give them that extra little juice the rally coming up and things like that no but is there a hard and fast deadline no Snow needs to make this team better to get them into the playoffs I don't think he's done that yet but he doesn't necessarily have to do it by August 1st. Katie Strang's column uh, post on her blog certainly intrigued me mm -hmm. because it kind of felt like that I know something sort of thing. Right. Um, but does he have to do it before August 1st? No, because I also don't think there's anybody that's so great that's going to rock Long Island and rock this vote. No, there isn't. Okay. Um, Brian from Florida, formerly from Levittown, like thousands of others, <laughs> I'm sure. What does the Steven Stamkos five years, 37 Point five million dollars deal. What does that mean to John Tavares and the Islanders? I actually think it means a lot. Uh, might not be agreed with here. I don't know, but John, uh, excuse me, uh, Stamkos is con Stamkos has scored huge numbers of goals. His stats have been way better than John's. He's a year older. He's a year further down the line. But I think it at least gives the Islanders an idea. And by the way, this is a good deal for. Tampa Bay oh, yeah. and for Stamkos. Um, but I think it gives the Islanders a reasonable look at what you're looking at here when John becomes a restricted free agent after his entry-level contract ends up. It does, but I think John has to put up much bigger numbers in this season going into restricted free agency. I mean, look at Steven Stamkos is a superstar. I can't say the same yet for John Tavares. I think he can be. Uh, but Steven Stamkos has scored 96 goals in the last two seasons. So, uh, it's a, like, like Chris said, it's a, it's a fair contract for Tampa Bay and for Steven Stamkos. But John Tavares needs to, needs, to, needs to take it to another level to even come close to being a $7, 5000000 million cap hit. What would happen, and let's throw out the arena discussion, future of the franchise, all those mi little things for a second. What will happen is if John posts semi similar numbers this coming season to last season, you'll just be looking at a shorter-term mm -hmm. contract. You know, the team could bet on his future, but I, I think it'll be a shorter deal. You know, but I just say I just think it sets a little bit of a baseline oh, yeah. for what you're talking about for these first overall picks who become your best players, and John will be and probably is their best player. Yep. Corey from Connecticut, will Gart Snow be willing to trade away one of our better prospects for a good top four defenseman? I want to draw the line here on what you know and identify what we're talking about in terms of prospects. The Islanders' top prospects, in my view, and please jump in on where I'm wrong, are Strom, yeah. Niederreiter, and then I'm a huge Kevin Poulin fan, and yep. if he's healthy, I put him there. And then there's Calvin DeHaan, right. and then the Russian kids, and all the other guys. Uh, Travis Hamonix on the team. We're not talking about that that anymore. He doesn't have to trade Strom or Niederreiter. No to get what he needs. As for any of those other guys, as much as I like them and I like their potential, if it did cost somebody like that to get somebody very good, I don't think you hesitate to do it. But when we're talking about, well, you have to trade one of our better prospects, you know, you throw Nino, Strom out the door. I'm not saying they're untouchable, but they're not parts of these type of deals. He got a good player last year for a third round pick. Yep. There are player, there are deals to be made for just picks. If he has to do a prospect, it'll be from that second or maybe even that third level of prospect. Yeah, I mean, if he's going to trade one of those top prospects, it's going to be for a guy who's A, already an established star and who's locked up. I mean, because right. you don't want to get a guy who can leave town in a year or so. Um, look at I think to get a good player he's gonna have to part with a decent prospect at least um, I think Anders Lee has climbed up the ladder as well mm -hmm. on that list I think he's a moose I think he's got one year left in Notre Dame and then he's gonna turn pro um, but look at Garth Snow is gonna have to part with somebody sooner probably sooner rather than later in order to get a, a pretty good player on Long Island soon but he could get a second pair of defenseman conceivably yeah. for a second or third round draft pick or both no. he's uh, not trading in, Ryan Strong for Jordan in, Leopold in a salary <laughs> situation exactly right. so uh, I wouldn't I whatever trade down there's making the next couple weeks and I think they will I don't think you're gonna lose anybody that that anybody's gonna shed tears over that's my prediction our last one for this segment is Kenny from Beth page kind of a recap of what we've talked about here is Garth Snow for the most part done working on this year's lineup for the offseason. No, he can't be, first of all, because they've got to get to the floor. Um, look, we've talked about this before, Chris. They're tired of losing. If they really want to sit down uh, at media day at the Coliseum next in, in September and say, we think we're a playoff team, they need more. Just look around the division and what's gone on. 
Um, you have world-class goalies all over the Atlantic Division. They need more in order to make the playoffs. Yeah, the, and there'll be at least one more move to make, and then your depth moves and your Bridgeport moves and everything else, and then we'll come back and we'll record some segments reviewing those, or we'll eat a lot of crow. <laughs> Brian Compton from NHL.com. That was SNY.TV's Islanders Interactive. We'll see you next time.